There are multiple ways for creating objects in JavaScript, and I have done tutorials on many of these. However, I have yet to discuss classes, so it's time to do that. But I'm not just going to discuss classes, but also relate them to prototypal inheritance. We will then look at the pluses and minuses of JavaScript classes. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, JavaScript classes have been heralded and maligned by different developers. But let's put the emotions aside and take a look at classes. First, we will take a look at how to use them. Then we'll dig a little deeper and see how they relate to one of the pillars of JavaScript, prototypes. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of prototypes, I'll link to some tutorials in the description so that you can follow along with this concept. It's important to understand in order to connect with what I will mention in this tutorial. Finally, I'm going to get a bit subjective and talk about the pros and cons of classes from my perspective. So, the purpose of a class is to provide a structure for creating objects. That is the reason you would create a class. So, let's look at the structure first. Now, people use different data when they're illustrating classes, but I'm going to stick to probably the example that is used most frequently. And that's of a person class, and then we're going to subclass that specifically an employee. That's what we're going to do. So first, I want to set up my person class. We use the class keyword to do that. And then notice that the class name, I put the P in uppercase. That is a convention. It's not required, but highly recommended. So there's my class structure. That is all that's required to create a class. I could create an object from this. It wouldn't be very helpful, but I could do it. This is all that's required. However, normally we want to be able to add information, add data to the object when it's created. And we can do that with a constructor function. By setting up a constructor function, we can then pass data into the object when we're creating it. So before I set up that constructor function, here is how we would go about creating an object from a class. We have to use the new keyword. So just like we would do with a constructor function in JavaScript, and then we designate the class we want to create the object from. So that would create a new object and reference it with the variable p1. Now let's go ahead and set up the constructor function so we can add data to this object. We want to be able to pass in information and then have it assigned to the object. So for a person class, we'd want things like name and age. And I'm also going to add their preferred greeting, what this person, how this person likes to be greeted. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our constructor for that. Now the constructor is going to receive that information when it's passed in. So when we call new person and we put data inside of here, let me use my son's name and age and his preferred greeting. So when we put data in here, that's going to be passed to the constructor function. So we need to put the variables to account for that. Age and then greet. Now, what if somebody doesn't pass in a greeting? Well, I'm going to have it set a default greeting like that. Now, once that constructor function receives the data, it needs to attach it to the object. And this is done with the keyword this. And so we simply this.name equals name, this.age equals age, and this.greeting, that's what I'm going to call this one, equals greet. So these get assigned to the object. Now, also in this class, we can add some methods that can be linked to. 
And in reality, any methods we add to this class are added to the prototype. So that's how they're linked to the object that we create, is they're added to the prototype. And so we're going to add a, a get greeting method. And this is simply going to return a string. So we'll first grab the greeting. And the way we do that is the keyword this again, because that's referring to the object. And we're going to add to that the name using this again. At the end, we'll put an exclamation point and welcome, something like that. So that's the greeting that we're going to return, the string we're going to return whenever get greeting is called. So there we have a class and we've created, we've set up the code to create one object from it. Let's go ahead and create a second one. New person. And this one I will not include the greeting so we can see that it gets the default. So there's our second object that we created. So example of a class, and then we've created two objects from it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these objects. I mentioned that we're going to dig a little deeper and see how this relates to the prototype. So that's what we're going to do now. So I want to jump out here and refresh this and then jump to the console. And let's just look at P1. Let's look at these objects first. There's one object and two objects. And notice we got the default greeting here because we didn't supply it when we created that particular object. Now, notice what happens when I open this. So here is the data that's on the object itself. And here's the link to the prototype. Well, what is on that prototype? We have that constructor function. It keeps track of that for us so we know what class this was created from. We also have the getGreen method. So that is where it sits, is on the prototype. It is not added to the object itself. It is on the prototype and we link to that prototype. Same thing here. On that prototype is where the get greeting method is and we link to it. So we can access that. We'll do P2 here. And it returns the string. It's available to every object created but it's not placed on the object, it is placed on the prototype. Now, let's jump back in and we're going to extend this class. We're going to create a subclass. Let's say we wanted to create employees. Well, employees are also people. And so we want to extend the person class when we're creating an employee. So let's see how that is done in JavaScript. So I'm gonna set up the employee class and it extends the person class. So it is now a subclass of that. Now what does that mean when we create a subclass in JavaScript? Well, basically it's setting up our prototype chain is what it's doing and we'll take a look at that once we create an object. Now let's go ahead and set up our constructor. And this constructor has to have variables for everything we want to include that's part of the person class. So we're going to include those. Greet. And we'll set the default there as well. And then the last thing we're going to add that's unique to employee is salary. So here we have our constructor set up on the employee level. Now, most of these things can be added to the object through our person class. So we want to use the word super to basically call a constructor in the person class and pass in that data. Then we can add the salary to the object as well like this. We access the constructor for person to set this data and then we go ahead and set the salary for that employee as well. Now we can also override the, the get greeting method. Let's look at how we would do that. 
So I'm going to create it in here, which means that this will be a part of this prototype. So any objects created from this will look at the immediate prototype first. It will get this greeting method instead of this one. That's how we override it. And here's what we're going to do. Since the get greeting method on the person class has some of the things we already need, let's go ahead and use that part. So I'm going to use super again to call that. And then we're just going to add to that some additional text. Don't forget to record your time. So that is our get greeting method that overrides the get greeting method on the person class. And we can, of course, add our own unique methods as well. Just going to do a get salary. We'll just return the salary for that. Okay. So there we go. There is our employee subclass we've just created. Now, just like we've done before, we can create an object from that. We use new again. Employee is the class we want to use. Let's just pass in a name, age, preferred greeting, and salary. Something like that. All right, so there we have a subclass set up. Now let's take a look at that to see how this is different from the other two objects that we've taken a look at. So if we now look at E1, we can see it contains all of that information that we passed in. That was done correctly. We can access the methods. Let's do the get greeting first. We see that it is the get greeting method from its class, the one that overrides the person class, because we have this text. Don't forget to record your time. We also have access to get salary like that. Now let's take a look at the object and let's open that up. We can see the data that's attached to the object and then we have the prototype. So if we open that up, we have the constructor to indicate which class this object is coming from, but it's trying to identify the prototype chain. If we continue to open the prototype, we can now see the get greeting method that's attached to the person class. This is the get greeting method we attach to the employee class and the get salary method. And then if we continue up the prototype chain, here's the default prototype object that we have at the top level. So there we've been able to see that using the class structure still sets things up as prototypes similar to what we could do with the constructor function or other methods of creating objects. We would set things up the same way. So the, the behind the scenes structure is no different. That hasn't changed. JavaScript classes just give us a simpler syntax. So now before we're done here, let me just talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages. And these are from my perspective. So these are what I feel are advantages and disadvantages of classes. Now, first off, the advantages, and that's a clean syntax. That's one of the nice things about JavaScript classes is I think they're a clean, cleaner syntax than some of the other ways to create objects. And they're probably cleaner because they hide some of what's going on with the prototype. That's probably why it's cleaner. At least I, that's what I think the reason it's cleaner. Something else I like about it is that it's optional. You're not required to create objects this way. You can still use the traditional methods, methods that those of us have been around JavaScript for a long time have become used to. So those are still available. This is just an optional. This is, in a way, syntax has been provided for those that come from class-based languages. And I think this is an advantage as well. Uh, if you do any sort of React development, you can create React components with classes. So if you know the syntax of classes, that puts you 
ahead in creating React components. Now let's look, talk about some of the disadvantages. One is the inflexible syntax. That's one thing I really don't like about it. You have to do certain things a certain way. There's some things about the syntax that are just pretty inflexible. And one thing I love about JavaScript is how flexible it can be. And so that becomes a disadvantage for me. There's issues with this binding. Now, the issues with this binding didn't start with classes. It's been a part of JavaScript for some time. But the problem and the reason I put this as a disadvantage is the syntax used for classes sometimes makes you think you don't have to worry about that. If you create a method inside a class and you're planning to call that method from a handler, well, you're going to have some issues with this binding and you'll need to correct those issues. And because of the syntax, that's not obvious. And so that is a disadvantage. And then finally, I think a disadvantage of classes is it confuses the true nature of prototypes. Uh, the syntax is simpler and cleaner, which is nice, but that also hides what's going on in the background. Um, and so if somebody just uses classes and don't understand what really is going on, they have an incomplete knowledge of JavaScript. Their use of JavaScript is not as effective because of their lack of understanding. I think that's a disadvantage. Some may argue against that, but I think it's a disadvantage. I think it's better to understand what is really going on. All right, so those are some of the advantages and disadvantages. From my perspective, if you have different ideas, please include those in the comments. I love discussions like that. And I hope this was helpful. If you've not gotten into classes a lot, hopefully that will show you the syntax that is available for creating classes. And it may be something you decide to use. So if this discussion was helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Also, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. I'm looking for patrons to support this channel. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files I use. You can also contribute by visiting my website. You can follow a link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week and thanks for watching.